friends, Sarah here from Sunset Bow, and today I wanted to do a review and walkthrough of a deck called the Tarot of the North Atlantic. So this is a deck that's relatively new to me, and I just really love it. I really love the artwork, and I really think that um, the artist, whose name is Lee Thompson, did a wonderful job uh, in terms of connecting animals of the North Atlantic to the concepts in tarot. And I just think it's a really lovely and interesting deck using a style of artwork that I really enjoy. And I just wanted to kind of show it off and share it because actually at the point that I decided to buy this deck, I couldn't find a walkthrough of it on YouTube, which was astounding to me. Um, and I believe that there have been some flip throughs and things like that posted since I actually ordered this deck. But um, there, at the time that I ordered it, I kind of had to order it based on only seeing a few cards because again, there wasn't, I couldn't find a video on this deck on YouTube. And so again, this deck is by an artist named Lee Thompson. I believe it was originally a Kickstarter deck. And I have to credit the Instagram Indie Deck Review uh, for how I found this deck because I had no idea that this deck existed until I saw it on their Instagram and I was just immediately drawn to it. Um, for starters, I love the ocean theme of the deck. Um, the artist, uh, whose name again is Lee Thompson, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, did a wonderful job of connecting different creatures uh, of the North Atlantic to the concepts in tarot. And I find it really fascinating some of the, the connections that she made and they're really um, intuitive and awesome. Um, and then I also just personally, I really love fabric and fiber art. Um, I actually have a, an entire wall in my house that's all fabric and fiber art. There's some fine art pieces by professional artists. There are some pieces that are just embroideries made by members of my family. Um, I personally myself do a lot of embroidery um, and that kind of thing, cross stitch. Um, so it's a style of artwork that I really love and connect to. And so when I saw this deck, I immediately was drawn to it. Um, I think that my love for fiber art and for stitch work and all of those things is also part of the reason why I connect really strongly to the textured tarot. Because normally I don't typically find myself drawn to collage style decks, but I do find that when it incorporates um, fabric or fiber art into it, suddenly it becomes really appealing to me. Um, and the textured tarot has a lot of that as well. But so this deck is really wonderful and I just wanted to kind of um, show it off to everyone. So um, again, this is the Tarot of the North Atlantic by Lee Thompson. So it comes in a nice glossy box. Um, I should mention that actually this deck is right now officially out of print. Um, but I believe she's planning on doing another edition of it. And if you go to her website, um, which I will link below, I think you can sign up, um, to be notified, uh, if there is a second edition. Um, so that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video. Otherwise, you know, I know, I know people don't love to see videos on out of print decks, but, um, I really did want to talk about this one because I think it's really quite wonderful. Um, so uh, the deck the deck comes in this glossy box. Um, it does come with a booklet. Um, the booklet doesn't fit in the box. If I had one complaint about this deck, that is the only one, is that the booklet doesn't fit in the box. Um, but the booklet is really nice because she really describes specifically how she connects these individual animals that are captured in the cards um, to the um, to the actual symbology of the tarot. And I really want to pull out one particular one. I am going to go through all of the cards individually but there was one particular one that I wanted to pull out because I it wasn't immediately apparent to me what the connection was and then the um, the, the connection that she drew between this animal and this card ended up being so brilliant I thought so this is the Hierophant card and as you can see it's a horseshoe crab and um, I just want to read what she says about the horseshoe crab as it connects to the Hierophant in the booklet so, Hierophant, a horseshoe crab, Limulus polyphemus, is returned to shallow water. And what she says is, horseshoe crabs are living fossils, existing unchanged in the fossil record for 445 million years. They carry unusual blood. Copper-based hemocyanin, rather than iron-based hemoglobin, carries the oxygen in their bodies. Their blood is collected for its amoebocytes, the antibodies within it. From these amoebocytes, coagulant is produced, which is used to screen vaccines and medical equipment for contamination before use. So that's the description of the animal. And then what she says about the card, I am the key to every lock. 
Their blood unlocks secrets, and their ancient body plan has carried them through 450 million years. There is strength and tradition in refining a process chosen early. And I just, I think that's so brilliant to connect, you know, this animal that has existed unchanged for such a long time and connect that to the Hierophant and also connect it to the concept of the keys. You know, you always see, um, you know, there's this sort of keys to knowledge, um, you know, in the Hierophant and to connect that to the way that um, horseshoe crab's blood is used in medical applications. I just, I thought that that was incredibly brilliant and it, it, it sticks in my mind and it makes me really able to make that connection between the animal and the card. So, and most of these cards are similarly insightful, I think, um, in terms of the connection between the animal and the card. So I'm not going to go through all of the descriptions, obviously, but I just wanted to mention that one in particular because I thought that it was really incredible. And it was, as I was going through this deck for the first time, it was one of the things that really made me say, hey, wow, she really put some incredible thought into how she connects up these different animals to the concepts embodied in tarot. And so I'm just going to go through the cards. I will talk a little bit about them as I go through them, but you know, the fool here is a puffin. And one of the things she notes in the book is that the puffin, as it walks off the cliff, it's either going to fly or it's going to swim, but it can both fly and swim beautifully. So whether it falls into the water or whether it takes off and is able to soar into the air, it's going to end up being okay. And I, I really like that, you know, as a concept of the fool, um, you know, and the, the whole idea that the, the fool, we kind of assume is going to be protected to some extent by his innocence. And no matter where he goes, you know, if he falls off the cliff, there's this sort of idea that, um, that, you know, that, that naivete kind of is, is protective, um, and that the outcome is probably still going to be good. And so I really like that for the puffin. So we've got an octopus, um, for the magician. Again, wonderful. You know, you think of octopuses, they're incredibly smart. They can manipulate all kinds of objects. Um, you know, they, they are incredibly intelligent and, um, I think that's a wonderful choice for the magician. We've got a manta ray for the high priestess. And I also just want to note how beautiful this artwork is and how well it was photographed. I've had, I posted some pictures um, from this artwork on Instagram and had some people ask if these cards were actually 3D because it's very difficult to tell in photographs that they're not 3D. And I noticed that um, when Indie Deck Review posted about this deck as well, they also had people asking whether or not the deck was actually 3D. And and it's not. It's it's a cardstock deck, but all of the artwork is just beautifully photographed so that the 3D elements of the artwork really come through. Um, the Empress is a blue whale. The Emperor is a humpback whale. Again, we have a horseshoe crab for the Hierophant. And the lovers, the chariot, I love this shark for the chariot. Um, and you can see even that there's a shark tooth included in the artwork. It's just, it's really awesome how she created this artwork. Justice, and I really love this one for the justice card. Um, this is a seal and the idea that she comes up with in the book for the justice card and how the seal relates is that this is an animal that was once, you know, hunted almost to extinction um, for its fur coat. But over time, you know, we have made better decisions as the human race and, um, you know, protected this animal so that it, it has, has bounced back from extinction. And so that is the... Um, sort of, you know, balance in justice um, that comes through with this particular animal. We've got the polar bear as the hermit. I love, love, love this wheel card. It just embodies the phases of the moon, the tides. Um, it's such a perfect encapsulation of the wheel. You know, things constantly change. They're constantly in flux. And, you know, the wheel goes around and around. And I love how the moon phases um, are the wheel um, in, this, in this particular uh, card. We have a turtle for strength. We have a jellyfish for suspended or the hanged man. I also really love this death card because it shows sort of this ghostly outline of the whale that has died and then it shows, you know, the whale um, skeleton as it decays on the floor of the ocean but then obviously there are things um, growing out of that. So again, it shows that cyclical nature of death. Hello. 
my kitty is very interested in what I'm doing because I'm not paying attention to her. We have the seahorse's temperance. And again, the idea here is one of balance. You know, the male and the female seahorses both take turns um, in terms of, you know, incubating and gestating their young. And so, you know, that again, represents, uh, represents those concepts of temperance. We have a lobster for the devil. And this is another one where the booklet was so interesting because um, you can see here that there's a rope uh, coming down that sort of suggests a lobster trap. And what it notes is that, you know, with lobster traps, what people initially thought is that lobsters would go into the traps and couldn't get out. And that's how we trapped lobsters. But the reality of the situation is lobsters can go in and out of traps whenever they want. You know, it's, it's the only thing that keeps them in the trap long enough to be caught is the attraction of the bait that embodies the devil so well you know the lobster is so drawn to whatever this bait is in the trap that it it you know doesn't escape when it should um even though it can and so i think that that's just a fantastic take on the devil um we have beautiful iceberg for the tower a sea anemone for the star the moon I absolutely adore this card. There's this beautiful, what looks like mother of pearl button as the moon. It's just gorgeous. The sun, and I love this too because it shows these um, little, they're almost like little lenses showing um, the growth of, you know, different types of plankton um, as fed by the sun. And so again, it brings you know, it, it, it's sort of that illumination from the sun, you know, understanding the, the truth behind things. Um, and I, it also gets at the sort of, um, you know, natural processes that are powered by the sun. And I think it's just amazing. Um, here we have judgment. And again, this is a school of cod, which we are, again, in this case, actively hunting to or overfishing almost to extinction. And, um, you know, so the judgment call or the judgment card here is like a wake up call. And here is the world as a kelp forest. So just a whole thriving ecosystem as the world. So it's incredibly beautiful. So again, the, um, this deck is somewhat pippish in terms of its depictions, but they're pips with some arrangement of the pips to suggest actually the Rider White Smith meaning of the cards. Um, the different suits are obviously sea themed. So instead of wands, we have bones. Instead of cups, we have shells. Instead of swords, we have feathers. And instead of pentacles, we have stones. So um, as you can see here, we, we'll just go ahead and start going through these. But um, I really like some of the things that she did. Like here, for example, we've got the Ace of Bones or the Ace of Wands, but you can notice that there's like an ocean vent. There's like magma venting into the ocean. So there's, you know, heat and fire actually venting into the ocean in the Wands cards. And I just really, really love that. And here we have the Two of Wands or Two of Bones. The three, the four, you can see how, you know, the way that they're arranged suggests a structure. Um, so that, you know, that's an element of, of suggestion that I really like. Whereas here in the five, everything's sort of opposing, you know, kind of at, at uh, cross purposes. So it, it suggests again, the five. Um, here we have the six and you can see it's like these bones are basically respecting this one, you know? So it, again, suggests that Rider Waite Smith meaning of the six and the seven, you know, we have some that are coming at these ones that are sort of standing strong. So it gives that seven of ones um, Rider Waite Smith meaning. And here's the eight. So you can see how the arrangement of them is very suggestive of the Rider Waite Smith meaning. And the nine and the 10. Now the courts are really interesting in this deck because she bases the maturity levels on the depth of the water that that particular animal is found in. So the pages are all coastal animals, uh, the knights are all near shore animals, the queens are all offshore animals, and the kings are all pelagic or deep sea animals. Um, so here we have the page of bones and I'm just gonna read really quickly um, you know, what these are. So for the Page of Bones, we have an Atlantic white-sided dolphin. 
The Knight is a narwhal, and I love this depiction of the knight. The Queen is an orca. And the King is actually a type of whale that I'm not familiar with. It kind of looks like a sperm whale, but it says cachalot, cachalot um, in the booklet. So that is type of whale that I'm not totally familiar with, so I'm going to have to look that up. But that is the King. And so then when we get into the shells, um, there are, again, just arrangements that suggest the meaning. Like here you can see we have the ace, and the ace is like a piece of a shell. And then we've got the sort of larger structure of the shell around it. So it's almost like the ace is the seed of growing this larger shell. And we have the two, and then in this case they have beautiful pearls inside of them. The three, the four, and you can see how it's suggested, you know, there is this one that's sort of hanging out up at the top here, like that cup being offered in the Four of Cups in the traditional Rider Waite Smith um, depiction, uh, and you know, it is suggestive of that. Here's the five, and these ones I like because these shells are all a little bit broken for the five. And here's the six. And the seven. The eight. You can see we've got shells lined up and then this shell is going off on its own. The nine. And the ten. The ten shell of shells, they're arranged in the rainbow pattern. So, you know, it, it it's really nice how, in this case, even though it is a somewhat pippish deck, the um, those arrangements really suggest the Rider Waite Smith meanings. And then we've got different um, shell based animals. Um, so again, the coastal animal here is the periwinkle. The Turritella communis is the knight of shells. The olive snail is the queen of shells. And the conch is the king of shells. So again, it's, this is deep sea, and the other ones are coastal's page, near shore for knight, offshore for queen, pelagic for king. So the swords are feathers. And here we have the ace. And the two of feathers. And I, I really, really like this. Um, you know, how they're above the water, <laughs> you know, and um, out, out in the air. Um, I like how these feathers are depicted. Here's the three. You can see these beautiful storm clouds in the back. I mean, it does suggest grief. It does suggest something being pierced painfully by all of those feathers. Here's the four. You know, we've got one lying down and I mean, it, it really is very cool. The five, everything's blowing around. It's across purposes, suggesting conflict. Here's the six. Again, there's a structure. This one's kind of floating off on its own. The seven. The eight. And it looks like this feather is hemmed in, but this one is able to float away. So there is that suggestion. Here's the nine. And the ten. And so all, there are seabirds um, for all of the feathers cards. So the coastal is a dove key for the page. The gannet is the nearshore bird that is the knight. Oh, and one thing I also didn't mention is that um, the court cards do also have a little symbol on them. All, and all of them, if you look close, they all do. The page has this little shield. The knight has this somewhat larger shield, and the king and queen have little crowns. Um, and I forgot to point those out as we were going through, but they all have that um, on all the courts. So the queen is a shearwater, and the king is an albatross. And then finally we get into the stones. So the stones are the pentacles. And we have here the ace of stones. The two. The three, I love how it shows the beginnings of a structure, you know, creating something. The four. The five. The six. The seven. 
seven. I love this one, how it sort of seems like the stones are growing on this underwater plant. <laughs> um, I think that that's a really cool way of depicting the seven. The eight of stones, again, we've got structures being built here. The nine. And the ten. And in this case, it's a very big structure that's almost reaching the surface of the water. Um, which is very cool. So the stones are all um, fish. Um, so again, for the page, for the coastal fish, um, we have, and you can see, again, there's the little shield for the page. So this is a herring. The knight is a mackerel. There's the knight's shield. The queen is offshore, a bluefish. Oops. And the king, pelagic uh, bluefin tuna. So I just, I think that this deck is really amazing. I love the way it's put together. I love the thought that went into um, how uh, how the different animals correspond with different uh, concepts in tarot. Um, I think it's just really, really lovely. And I think the artwork is fabulous. It's really nice cardstock as well. It's not super thick or anything. Um, it's nice and just a very, very light gloss to it. Not super glossy, but just a little bit of a sheen. Um, and it is a really nice shuffle actually. So I'll just show a shuffle really quick. It's, I mean, it shuffles just really beautifully. Um, and I just think it's a really wonderful deck. So I just kind of wanted to show this one off so it could get a little more attention, you know, and uh, in hopes that, um, that Lee Thompson, the artist, would do another edition of this deck potentially. So I will link her website below where it has a sign up link for the second edition of this deck. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I think it's a really wonderful one and just wanted to share it with everybody. If you're the kind of person who likes ocean life, if you're the kind of person who likes fiber art, um, if you're the kind of person who, you know, enjoys uh, stitchery or, um, or just generally, you know, likes sea creatures or likes a deck that has a strong environmental theme, um, this is a really wonderful deck. So uh, thanks so much everybody for taking a look at it with me and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.